Elsa. Oh my goodness, I didn't think about that. Um, Isaiah was right after Song of Solomon. Oh my goodness, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, in the stage fright. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Okay, this <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. This is Isaiah, and I got my my handy dandy water, 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 and I got another Bible. I just like um this part, this part where it says that um Isaiah was one of Jesus' his favorite books, and he quoted it frequently because the central theme is salvation. <coughs> My nose has been right itchy like a um like allergies like but it's gonna go away in a in a second. <laughs> That's what the Holy Spirit can do, babies. Okay. And I saw Wish today. My nose is a little runny. I have bad I'm I used to have bad allergies like a lot. Like um sinus infections it wouldn't be like a cold it would be like a sinus infection where like you know your nose itchy your throat is itchy and all that stuff but i used to like scratch my nose and my my and, and scratch my throat with my you know your tongue like in the back of the throat <clears throat> but i learned that it makes it worse by by um touching it so i'm scratching it whatever you call the word so don't do that or it's gonna get worse don't scratch your nose. To just let it uh, itch. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Um. But I watch a wish. I don't know what day it is. Is it? I don't know. But. <clears throat> but whenever I posted a picture of Isaiah, is when I do the do. When I watched it. Um. After watching that. Um. Um, well, anyways, I don't, I'm just gonna, I, I, okay, talk. Okay, so, um, cause I get nervous starting stuff. <laughs> I get nervous starting stuff, so I just, like, ramble before. And, um, <clears throat> so, Isaiah, so, Isaiah, um, and I'm just trying to see which ones I should do first. Should I do this first? Where should I read this first? Okay, we'll I'll read this. Isaiah, slowly he rose, and the crowd fell silent. Those at the back leaned forward, straining. And okay, hold up. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't like um doing this because I like to laugh and stuff. Like you know, it might seem like um. Uh, like at the wrong time but sometimes you just want to laugh and when you're reading the bible it's okay to just laugh because it's happiness you know it's happiness it's not like laughing at what god is saying it's just laughing because it feels good to to because you get lost in it like i read and then i just get lost and i'm like what did i just read but it's but i feel like laughing i feel like it's it's not funny but it's it makes you want to laugh. <laughs> okay. 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 So ignore or don't ignore. Laugh with me, I guess. <clears throat> and so, like, it might seem like I'm, like, attacking somebody. But when it, that does happen, sometimes I do notice that it's about somebody. But sometimes I don't. So some people get mad at me, like, spiritually. And they're like, or, like, I people who watch the like get mad and i'm just like um i didn't know i was talking about you baby i didn't know i was talking about you so get mad at god and get mad at god so that you can turn it you know i'm sorry so if if i laugh maybe it's to get your attention you know because i'm going through different time zones okay i don't know what time zone it could be <clears throat> the 80s and the 70s and the 60s and the 50s and the whatever okay it's, it don't matter so you forgive yourself okay it's just a learning experience okay isaiah slowly he rose and the crowd fell silent 
Um, and it's annoying too, okay, because something will stick in my head. And so while I'm re when like a vision comes to my head, when I read it, I'm reading it. But and when I'm supposed to say something, I don't say it because I don't want to expose anybody. <laughs> I don't want to say something that that I feel like it's, it's about somebody that I don't know who it's about, but it's about somebody, okay? And um, so I, uh, when I don't say it, blah, 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 truck. When I don't say it, see, when cars or something go by, I'm losing my train of thought, but when I, la, 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 when I, um, okay, when I uh say it, when I read something, and then if I'm supposed to, if I have a vision and I'm supposed to say something about it and I keep on reading and I, that, and I don't say it, then I don't remember what I read. So I have to go back, whatever, or I'll say it later on right here when I'm reading later on to get it out of my system. Because it's like, it's like stuck in my system. Like I have to say it like I'm like, or I like am taunted by it. Like it just like keeps on pressing my head over and over. Over and over, 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 you know what I'm saying? It's like um somebody putting a pizza in front of your face, and you're just like, or like some food or something, like, or like some waffles in front of your face, you're just like, ah, oh. uh, I have to say, there's a waffle in front of my face. There's a syrup. There's syrup too. It's dripping syrup. <laughs> there is um you know it's just like I have to say it. Like get out of my face. You know you have to say it because it's just there and it's just like. Just think, and it just getting old, just sitting there rotting, and you're just like, I don't want to smell that no more. I don't want to keep it in my system. Like, do you want to smell rotten food? Do you want to have mold in your nose? <laughs> <coughs> rotting away, or whatever you call it. I don't know. That's the term. That's how you say it. <laughs> okay, but Isaiah, <laughs> let's go. Slowly he rose, and the crowd fell silent. Um, I'll let you process. Okay, I gotta focus on you. Slowly he rose, and the crowd fell silent. Those at the back leaned forward, straining to hear. Okay, those at the back. The atmosphere was electric. It's electric. Mm -hmm. The electric slide. Oh my goodness. Um,. Okay, it's a song. The atmosphere was electric. He spoke in his carefully chosen words, flew like swift arrows, and found... Oh, my goodness, hold up. I don't know what I read. Okay. Slowly he rose and the crowd fell silent. Those at the back leaned forward. Wait, did I tell y'all about where she is? That's a good movie. <coughs> I should watch it. It connects all of the Disney movies, like at the end credits. I liked how the gold like sparkled on all of the um, like on all the Disney characters or whatever. I don't know if it showed all of them. I don't remember any Disney movie really. <laughs> it's all connected. That's why. Okay. Cause uh, cause um, the star, um, um, sprinkles light like God does on all of. The Disney princesses on all of the princesses, on all of the people. And I think it's cool how Wish is like a, puts everything together. I love when, um, my favorite part was the ending where, um, everybody started singing because they realized the power that they held, that God gave them. They realized that the star wasn't the star, but the star was, um, in them, you know, like the Holy Spirit was in them. They didn't know the power that they held, um, that God gave them was to end them. Dang, it was so cute. Oh my goodness, like everybody's a star. <clears throat> but anyways, I'm like, I'm like matches. We are matching, not matching. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, so. Okay, we can go. Okay. Baby, slow down the song. Breathe me in, breathe in. Selena Gomez song. Okay. Isaiah slowly he rose and the crowd fell silent. Those at the back leaned forward, straining to hear. The atmosphere was electric. He spoke and his carefully chosen words flew like swift arrows and 
found their mark. I carefully chose my. Every time I see Mark, I think about Mark in the Bible. Oh, it's so frustrating. About okay, focus. Okay. The great man, a spokesman for God, was warning and condemning. The crowd became restless, shifting positions, um, clenching fists, and murmuring. Some agreed with his message, nodding their heads and weeping softly, but most were angry, and they began to shout back insults and threats. Such was the life of a prophet. The office of prophet was instituted during the days of Samuel, the last of the judges. Prophets stood with the priests as God's special representatives. The prophet's role was to speak for God, confronting the people and their leaders with God's commands and promises. Um, maybe we read that he said the prophet's role was to speak for God confronting the people and their leaders with God's commands and promises because of this confrontational stance and the continuing tendency of people to disobey God true prophets were usually not very popular but though their messages often went unheeded they faithfully and forcefully proclaimed the truth. Let me move a little bit because my head's, my neck is hurting. I'm sitting. I want to lay down. Wah. Okay. Wah. My back. Good. <laughs> my back pop. Okay. Okay. Hold up. Wah. My stomach. Okay. What was that? Oh, la la la. Yeah. So. Their message often were unheeded. They faithfully and forcefully proclaimed the truth. The book of Isaiah is the first of the writings of the prophets in the Bible. And Isaiah the author is generally considered to be the greatest prophet. He was probably reared in an aristocratic home and married to a prophetess. prophetess. In the beginning of his ministry, he was well liked. But like most prophets, he soon became unpopular because of his messages. His messages were so difficult to hear. He called the people to turn from their lives of sins and warned them of God's judgment and punishment. Isaiah had an active ministry for 60 years before tradition says he was executed during Manasseh's reign. As God's special messenger to Judah, Isaiah prophesied during the reigns of several of its rulers. Many of his messages to these rulers are rec recorded in his book. Okay, let me get you down. Okay. Okay. Uzziah and Jotham. I don't like names. It's Gotham. <laughs> Uh, is it a town? Oh, I forgot to look that up. Last time I talked about that. Okay. Gotham City. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Where am I at? Okay. Isaiah 1 through 6. <clears throat> oh, has Isaiah 7 through 14. And Hezekiah. Isaiah 15 through 39. The first half of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 1 through 39 contains scathing denunciation. Pronunciations and pronunciation. The first half of the book of Isaiah contains scathing denunciations and pronouncements. I don't know, as God calls Judah, Israel, and the surrounding nations to repent of their sins. The last 27 chapters. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Wait. But some words, it's okay to not know. Because you'll still understand the meaning of it by this what it says right here is basically what it means. It means to repent of their sins. That's what I guess that means. The last so it's okay to not know some words, you know. Um in English. My baby's okay. Cause I don't the last twenty seven chapters, however, are filled with consolation and hope. So, I don't know what that means. Of coming together, I guess. And hope. Um, and hope. 
Oh, as Isaiah unfolds God's promise of future blessings through his Messiah. As you read Isaiah, imagine this strong and courageous man of God fearlessly proclaiming God's word and listen to his message. I don't know why I said it kind of really wrong. But as you read Isaiah, imagine this strong and courageous man of God fearlessly proclaiming God's word and listen to his message. Return, repent, and be renewed in relation to your own life. See, I just um, daydreamed off. Wait, I just zoned out to heaven. Huh. But imagine this strong and courageous man of God fearlessly proclaiming God's word and listen to his message. Return, repent, and be renewed in relation to your own life. Then trust in God's redemption through Christ and rejoice. Your Savior has come and he's coming again. So it's amazing that makes sense why I was told to read this part. And plus, I saw uh, Leah, she said Isaiah, and I was like, um, I was supposed to read this part. So I just got off the video as soon as she said that, and then um, I started recording this. It's because we're all connecting. I'm supposed to for a reason. Okay, so this viral statistics, the purpose is to call the nation of Judah back to God and to tell of God's salvation through the Messiah. And um, as the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, um, the people of the, the, the original audience is the people of the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. The events of Isaiah 1-39 occurred during Isaiah's ministry, so they were probably written around that time. However, may have been written near the end of Isaiah's life. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chest, the chest, the the chastisement, chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Isaiah and his two sons. So the book of Isaiah contains both prose and poetry and uses personal personification, the technique of attributing. So it's, it's um them using personal qualities to divine beings or inanimate objects. Oh. Oh, okay, that's like um Tinkerbell. Tinker Tink Tink Tink. Peter Pan. Uh, also, many of the prophecies. Oh, Tarzan too. Also, many of the prophecies in Isaiah. Oh yeah, and a oh, Little Mermaid. Also, many of the prophecies in Isaiah contain predictions that foretell a soon to occur event and a distant future event at the same time. You get it? Same time. We all in the same time. <clears throat> we all. What? So. So, um, this is the words of judgment. Let's see. Let's read. The first 39 chapters in Isaiah generally carry the message of judgment for sin. I keep on feeling like I gotta share that video, like, uh, um, of me of that water bottle video. <laughs> From me on the water bottle video. Okay. So, um, it's generally carries the message of judgment for sin. Isaiah brings the message of judgment to Judah, Israel, and the it's a, 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 names are so annoying. So, um, and the surrounding pagan nations. The people of Judah had a form of godliness, but in their hearts they were corrupt. Isaiah's warnings were intended to purify the people by helping them understand God's true nature and message. However, they ignored the repeated warnings that Isaiah brought. We need to heed this prophetic voice and not repeat their error. So the sins of Israel and Judah, uh, judgment against pagan nations, God's purpose and judgment, Jerusalem's true and false hopes, events during the reign of Hezekiah. I might not read these well. Israel's release from captivity, the future redeemer, the future kingdom. Because you can just read it or screenshot it. The final 27 chapters in Isaiah generally bring a message of forgiveness. 
comfort and hope. This message of hope looks forward to the coming of the Messiah. Isaiah speaks more about the Messiah than any other Old Testament prophet. He describes the Messiah as both the suffering servant and the sovereign Lord. The fact that the Messiah was to be both a suffering servant and a sovereign Lord could not be understood clearly until New Testament times. Based on what Jesus Christ has done, God freely offers forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith. This is God's message of comfort to us because those who heed it find eternal peace and fellowship with him. Okay. So, God is highly exalted above all his creatures. His moral perfection, people hate that, but we are creatures. Maybe it's because you see yourself better than other people. Um, but yeah. But yeah. Where all the wild things are, where all the wild things go. It's a book in the movie. I think we all, 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 we we'll always read that. It's like about monsters or whatever. It reminds me of, um, Abu, Abu, somebody. Oh, yeah. He said, um, <clears throat> um, Aladdin. God is highly exalted above all his creatures, his creations. His moral perfection stands in contrast to evil people and nations god is perfect and sinless in all his motives and actions so he is in perfect control of his power judgment love and mercy because god is without sin he alone can help us with our sin his holy nature is our standard for morality it is only right that we regard him as supreme in power and moral perfection we must never treat God as common or ordinary. I love that part. We must never treat God as common or ordinary. He alone deserves our devotion and praise. He is always truthful, fair, and just. <clears throat> because God is holy, he requires his people to treat others justly. He promised to punish Israel, Judah, and other nations for faithless immorality, immorality and idolatry. Idolatry. Idol. Idol. Tree. This sounds like adultery. Same. Um, true faith had degenerated. And in, in, you can cheat on God too. You know that? Without being married. You're cheating too. You're committing adultery too. Part. Cheating on God without being married. So it's like you're cheating you're cheating on somebody who is perfect basically and not a human how you see human as perfect, like a man as perfect. Some people do by adultery. But you are um basically so I hope men know this too. You know? Love is love basically. So we're all are cheating on God. When we um, commit sin outside of marriage. So it's like you're cheating on your kids basically too. Because if you can't, because a lot of people can't, don't don't take it, can't really take that seriously. So it's basically you're cheating on your kids. Because um, you're um, not standing for um um, truthful, fair, and just. <clears throat> um, you're opening up to um doors of of Satan. Uh, so I don't know why was it. You have to treat others justly. He promised to punish um Israel, Judah, and other nations for faithless immorality, immorality, and adultery. By you know like um like vampires. The originals, 
and Vampire Diaries. And oh, I loved. We used to watch. Um, well, I never watched True Blood, but that's a good vibe. Um, it's like uh, evil, very evil. It's like even more evil, and like, um, oh my goodness, um, baby, hold up, yeah, are you okay? Hold up, oh my gosh, oh, um, Rad, what's it called? Game of Thrones, and um, Game of Thrones, and Teen Wolf. That was my favorite show when I was a kid. Oh my goodness. I love it. And um I used to watch um we used to watch um a girl play at the same time during when I was like 11, 12. We used to watch um uh um oh yeah and I used to watch that show that Gage Go Lightly. I loved Gage Go Lightly was my favorite. G A G E G O L I G H T L Y Go Lightly. I uh, heard that, sh that, um, that, let me get my laptop. Um, I used to love that, um, that Nickelodeon, I think, show she was in. Like, I just love romance. No, I always thought I was like, I'm gonna set my phone down. I used to thought my, um, my, uh, I was a bad, girl for um like a romance because i thought i was like like um like get this book Oopsie. thought i was bad because i liked her with the main character <laughs> i was thinking they were cute together and i always wanted like more romance and i always didn't like the fight fighting because it took away from the romance like them being together, I didn't want, like, I didn't care about, like, kissing or anything, but I liked, you know how, like, Asian shows are, like, the, the friends kind of romance, kind of, like, the, the loving kind of love shown, I love that, between man and woman, so let me, um, show, let me, cause I need to look it up. Blah 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 blah. Um, like I loved her character too on there. Gage, Gage. Oh, that's another one too. Cabin Fever. Oops, I said the wrong. Um, Fresh Out of College face the horrors of flesh eating. Virus while staying at a remote cabin. Mm -hmm. But let me see. Yeah, Teen Wolf. And then it was, um, what was it? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That was another one. True. Yeah, I already said that before, but I used to want them together. Like, I was like, <laughs> These two, and I used to watch um Jersey Shore. That was my, my um, when I was like eleven. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, like I'm a bad girl. <sighs> so this reminds me of W two. I mean, everybody should start watching Asian shows because that's that'll help your morals to be more res to be more respectful. You know, like. American shows and like any other shows a lot of the time from different places are all about disrespecting your family, your parents and stuff. And um like um um in Asia their religion or or not religion but whatever they believe is I they might believe in whatever but um I like that they respect their family. They they hold respect um, high, you know, even, you know, you might think, oh, well, they're a bad person, well, you don't have to live with them forever, you just, it's not, it's just not that hard to just be nice, just be a nice person, you know what I'm saying, just be a nice person and move on, and it's, it's your pride that makes you get upset about being nice, because being nice is just, it's just 
the thing you should do. Oh, yeah, hey, long shot. My nephew loves horses. Tyson loves horses. <laughs> long shot. Let's see. Okay. And, um, Papa, 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 Papa. Um, what was it? Um, nom 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 But it was another movie. I might think of it later, but it's this cartoon horse movie out. Um, Spirit, yeah. That's what my nephew wants to see. And they went to watch the Charles movie too. They liked it, they loved it. Spirit, um, oh, so, well, it's the new one, the new spirit, um, oh, spirit untamed, because we can't be tamed, only God can tame us, shoot, oh, no, that's the old one, but whatever, so, <clears throat> it's meant to be, after moving to a sleepy little town, young Lucky, um, Prescott, <laughs> um, befriends a wild Mustang named Spirit who shares her rebellious spirit when a heartless wrangler plans to capture Spirit in his herd. Lucky and her new friends embark on the adventure of a lifetime to rescue the horse that forever changed her life. I guess we need to watch that, baby. Um, baby. Hold up. Spirit. Song is that oceans? Young, how cute! How cute! Look at me, Be cool if it has like show some highlights coming out. But I know. It's there. Let's see. <laughs> what you looking at? What you look? What you looking? For? Oh, what's the song? Um, um, like what you looking at? What you, what you looking at? It's a um, it's a cleaning song. I don't know the words though. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Where are we? Okay. So the true faith had degenerated into national pride and into religious rituals. We also must trust in God alone and fulfill his commands. We should not forsake justice nor give in to selfishness. If we harden our hearts against God's message, punishment will surely come. Because God's judgment is coming. We need a savior. I need a soldier. Mm -hmm. Okay. We need a savior. No person or nation can be saved without God's help. Christ's perfect sacrifice for our sins is foretold. Portrayed in Isaiah. All who trust God can be freed from their sin and restored to him. We cannot save ourselves. However... God is willing to save all who turn from their sin and come to him. Salvation is from God alone. No amount of God work of um wait. No amount of God work can earn it. No amount of work that you would think God would want you to do, no amount of good works can earn it. Okay, so no amount of good works can earn it. Isaiah prophesied that God would send the Messiah to save his people. He would set up his own kingdom as the faithful prince of peace who rules with righteousness. He would come as sovereign Lord, but first he would come as a servant who would die to take away sins. Because of this, our trust must be in the Messiah and God. So not in ourselves or in any nation or power. We have no hope. Unless we believe in him, trust Christ fully, and let him rule in your life as your sovereign Lord. 
And so this is about holiness, punishment, salvation, the Messiah, and hope. So God promises comfort, deliverance, and restoration in his future kingdom. The Messiah will rule over his faithful followers in the age to come. Hope is possible because Christ is coming. We can't be refreshed because compassion. Wait, we can be. Let me see this. We can be. It's hard to read um, through the phone. Kiss me through the phone. Kiss me through the phone. See you later on. That's the song. Kiss me through the phone. Okay. No matter how bleak the situation. I'm going to have to post that. No matter how bleak the situation or how evil the world, we must continue to be God's faithful people who hope for his return. Amos becomes a prophet, so he's going to be in office. Because I don't, I don't, I don't see the problem with this. <laughs> okay. So... Let me just read this silently. Because it doesn't really. It's not important right now. He led many people. He led many of his people into idolatry. He warned the people of Israel. Of a coming exile. Which took place when the Syrians destroyed Samaria. And exiled the people to foreign lands. So the prophet Isaiah lived and prophesied in Jerusalem, the capital of the southern kingdom of Judah. The temple in Jerusalem built by Solomon was a place of true worship for God's people. Many of Isaiah's prophecies warned the people of their coming exile should they fail to turn from their idolatry and other sinful practices. And despite the good influences of the prophets and a few good kings, a series of wicked kings led Judah into a downward spiral that ended with the destruction of Jerusalem and the exile of the people to Babylonia. So when Isaiah was living and prophesying in Jerusalem, the Assyrian Empire was the major power in the region and the primary threat to the kingdom of Judah. They conquered the northern kingdom of Israel and exiled its people and later threatened Judah during the Assyrian later threatened Judah during the reign of King Hezekiah, though Judah would survive this attack. Okay. During the ministry of Isaiah, the kingdom of Babylonian, Babylonia was on the rise. They conquered the Assyrians, thoroughly destroyed and threatened Jerusalem. The process would bring punishment and destruction to Judah. Who are you? Okay. 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 Oh, gosh. Oh, mm, goodness. Oh. Oh. Oh, sneeze. No. Okay. Oh. Okay. He, um, so, he prophesies that Babylonia will bring punishment and destruction to Judah and Jerusalem. But he... Also made it clear that the Babylonians would suffer just punishment for their many acts of violence. See, I get, I like history and stuff, but I don't like the the names and stuff because it makes it boring. We're not getting to good part yet. During the ministry of Isaiah, Egypt, along with Ethiopia, to its south, waxed and waned, often in conflict with the great empires to the north. Kingdoms of Israel and Judah were caught in between, often making temporary treaties to play one power against the other. Isaiah prophesied the destruction of Egypt and Ethiopia at the hands of the Israelites, which would later take place. At one point, Judah turned to Egypt for protection. God promised judgment on both. That in the book, the prophet promises that someday the people of Egypt and Ethiopia will know the Lord and respect his restored people. Um... I'll just read because that stuff is going to fortune. me. So Isaiah begins by bringing a message of divine judgment for Israel and Judah. Although the events of the Assyrians poses a problem for Judah, God foretells the destruction of Israel and other evil surrounding nations through the prophet Isaiah. The section ends with the Assyrian 
invasion being healed off, demonstrating the clear unfolding of God's plan and promises for the nation at this time. Isaiah was a prophet during the time when the original nation of Israel had been divided into two kingdoms, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. The northern kingdom had sinned greatly against God, and the southern kingdom was headed in the same direction, perverting justice, oppressing the poor, turning from God to idols, and looking for military aid from pagan nations rather than help from God. Thus, Isaiah's ministry began as one of warning. Isaiah came primarily as a prophet to Judah, but his message was to also, was also for the northern kingdom. So his message was also for the north kingdom. Sometimes Israel refers to both kingdoms. Isaiah's prophecies cover 55 years of history and live to see the destruction and captivity of the northern kingdom. And, and yeah. I don't like numbers either. I'm tired of numbers. Okay, here Israel refers to the southern kingdom, Judah. I don't need to hurry. Go off. Because I get sleepy reading. I, I give myself ASMR. So, I don't know, around people a lot. Like, at all the time when I'm around people, like, Spiritually, but um, when I'm around, like my sister, my nephew, the world today, we were all just so sleepy. Like, I just need to go sleepy. Okay, here Israel refers to the southern kingdom, Judah. The people of Judah were sinning greatly and did not even care. In fact, they no longer 